Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from NECTEC Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at an interesting one. It's the Inland MK47. Now for you, those of you that may not know, Inland is a in-house brand of Micro Center. Micro Center, if you're in the United States and you're lucky to be near one, is a hardware, a PC guy's, well, actually a technology person's place to go it's a supermarket it's a walmart for technology um and they just recently started putting out mechanical keyboards i was able to actually pick this one up uh, because i don't know if it was uh returned or something but they're like uh we'll give it to you for 29.99 i was like all right and i just got in there just to browse but i was like it's 50 dollars." i was like mm, i don't know because i'm pretty sure it is not hot swappable but i mean it's a plank 40 percent and it is QMK compatible. So at 30 bucks, I couldn't say no. And um, it doesn't look like it's open. I mean, although they could have uh, heat shrank it again and just had this, but they were like, yeah, because it's like that, we can give it to you at $29.99. I was like, all right, I'll pick it up. Let's take it home and let's look at it. So this keyboard has a 47 key minimalist style, which is a plank. It's easy to carry, of course. Has Juana red linear switches. I'm going to guess that they're probably stock it has customized multimedia functions 17 lighting modes separated easy to use key line i think they're talking about the cable and it is qmk compatible with windows and mac compatibility so let's go ahead and tear this shrink wrap off all right so before we take a look at the keyboard let's see what we've got inside we've got an mk47 user manual and it tells us all of the mappings that it has right now huh. that seems to be fairly complete as as well it gives us all the different uh function or code combinations for us to be able to get to the specific keys that we may need and a lot of people are like i use 40 percent layers that's how um they call it lamp effect but the light settings and then function hyper hold down for five seconds and the keyboard will flash that's a factory reset as well as toggle the color of the backlight lamp efficiency mode switch brightness and speed let's see what else we've got in here so we have a wire keycap puller and we have a decent nylon braided usb a to usb c cable with a uh, elbow connector so it might be on the side to plug it in. We'll have to find out. And here we are with the MLAND MK47. And I, I got to say, it's a, it's kind of cute. I have a special place in my heart for 40% keyboards. But I got to say, I like how they have all the sub-legends already. So we know exactly what we can get to and has the most minimal ping. Let's go ahead and check out the keycaps here real quick. Actually, let's go with the space bar. And are these shine through? Hmm. They look like they could be, but I'm going to say they're definitely not hot swappable. But, oh, they are hot swappable. Well, shiver me timbers. I think we just, uh, Moved up to another level. Uh, QMK Hot Swap, 40% for $29.99. I think I might have gotten a good deal. So the stock switches are definitely pinging. But we can fix that. It does appear to have uh, some of the newer style uh, stabilizers, which thankfully are very well attached. And they are well lubed. Maybe a little over lubed, but that's fine. Uh, it does not appear, though, that we have anything below the case. Or, oh, I can't tell from this one. Let me see another one. Oh, no. We don't have any sort of dampening between the plate and the PCB or the PCB and the bottom of the case. And it does appear that we have a steel plate. All right, 
Well, you can't win them all. I, I'm just honestly surprised, pleasantly surprised, that we have Hot Swap. Five and pin Hot Swap compatibility. They are north facing. I gotta say, for a steel plate with no dampening and Guana Reds stock switches, I'm actually surprised it doesn't that it actually sounds decent. It's by no means awful. And I'm surprised that they have that the corner of the, the elbow on the um, USB connector as it's on the back. But that's neither here nor there. There's no flip-out feed. Now, this is definitely something I will be coming back to to mod because um, not only could I replace the keycaps, although I... I kind of like these. I'm not sure exactly what they are. I want to say they're almost like a sculpted OEM. Because they're not quite as tall as, say, an SA profile. But they are sculpted and they are nice. And we can feel the difference in the rows, which is the most important thing. Well, for me anyway, when it comes to uh, uh, touch type. But, um, that's, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love XDA keycaps. But too many times I find myself, wait a minute, which row am I in? because they're all the same height. But these actually give us an indication of what row we're on just because of their different heights and angles. I'm honestly surprised at how well it sounds stock. I gotta say, I really am. I have bought a lot of um, inland products over the years because I've always been lucky that I've always lived within like 20 miles of a micro center. So it... It has always been great, especially when, you know, say you're building your uh, new workstation and you forgot a SATA cable or you need a, you know, Molex to SATA power adapter or any number of things that, yes, you can get off of Amazon, but you might need to wait one or two days before you get it. You could just pop in your car, drive down to Micro Center and pick that up along with $100 worth of other stuff that you may or may not have needed, but you're happy that you got it. Micro Center is definitely one of those places that I need to uh, practice constraint and control because there's so many things. And I mean, I've walked in there, you know, needing a cable and walking out with a brand new monitor. It was only $69. It's like, do you need it? No, but it was only $69. And I use it on my bench and it was 69 bucks. So it's like, it's an HD, yeah, it's not 4K, and it's only got, I mean, actually it does have 60 hertz pulling rate, but that's the standard. Um, but, I mean, it was just too good of a deal to pass up. There's been so many times, heck, I've walked in there and picked up a new computer because it was so cheap. Like, oh, there's only three of them left? Wait a minute, this was MSRP of $7.99, and now it's $2.59? I have to get it. <laughs> have no choice <laughs> uh, i am a bit of an impulsive buyer so um i have to sometimes just keep my credit card at home and just take out cash and just be like this is the most i can spend so because when i went there for this i was actually going for a couple of cables that yes i again i could have gotten off of amazon and a buck or two cheaper but I, I hadn't been to micro center in a minute so i said hey why not go ahead and pick up one of these so um i'm curious to see the QMK compatibility of this keyboard. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Oh, the lights come on immediately. Let's see how these lights look. Hmm. We have five levels of brightness and they actually are quite nicely bright. And it does look like these are shine through because I'm seeing the lights come through. So they're very likely ABS keycaps. Now let's go ahead. And see about. All right, so it's not in the database because it's not loading up. I'm really um, liking my buy here, um, especially that I got it at twenty nine ninety nine. It looks to be at thirty four ninety nine listed on the website right now, and it appears this is one of the few items Micro Center actually ships. For the longest time, they didn't ship anything. Like you wanted something, you had to go in the store. So that was the whole thing about living near one. So not only does this keyboard have via it is got qmk source and it's by uh, johnny lee hfd um i've seen his code in a lot of products from Akko, monskeek and a couple others 
So, um, and I've, I found his implementation to be fairly decent for the keyboards I've tried anyway. So it, it really, I mean, I could say that this is probably a good 40% plank to start with. If you have always looked at 40% and you've been like, Ooh, I'd like to try that, see if I could use it because they're actually already pre-programmed in a pretty good, um, with pretty good functionality. And the fact that, I mean, we don't have all the sub legends like for, uh, for the third layer, but we do have four layers available. Um, like say any of these number or the, um, the symbols above the number, it's just function shift and then, uh, the key that you want. But having those sub legends on here, I mean, you've even got mute on here is pretty, it makes it a lot easier to start to get used to it. Um, and despite it not being exactly how I program my 40%, I actually think I like the way that this one is laid out even better. And I might switch my other ones to it, but I'm going to play around with it for a while um, and see what. I can get out of this because I gotta say for the price I mean whether it be $29.99 like I got it or $34.99 as you can get it from the site right now it's a um I say it's a good deal I really think that this is a um it's just it's a nice little 40 percent it doesn't have any padding but that's something that can be added but despite that it still sounds decent I mean Obviously, we're only dealing with one stabilizer key here, but, and the shine through, which I usually am not the biggest fan of, is actually not bad at all. I mean, they are 1.1, which, I mean, at least goes above the one millimeter. And also for being unlubed, I mean, it doesn't sound like a dream. It definitely tells me, or tells my ear that this could definitely be modified um, very easily and would be able to sound very good or at least as good as the case will allow because it is a pretty slim case doesn't weigh much but i mean for just throwing this in your bag or even making a cyber deck this might be a really good choice just the specs Today we're taking a look at the Micro Center Inland MK47, a 47 key, 40% wired plank style keyboard. Now this keyboard does have QMK source and is VIA compatible. And I will include a link to the JSON file below. It has shine through OEM keycaps that I would guess are ABS, but I'm not able to find anything in the listings. It also includes sub legends for the different layers. There is no dampening in this keyboard and it comes with stock Wano Red switches. The weight of this keyboard comes in at 345 grams. The chin sits at 18 millimeters while the back sits at 22 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of five degrees. The MSRP for this keyboard is $49.99, though it is currently listed for $34.99 on microcenter.com. So I gotta say, for a 40%, which is not what you'd call a very common layout. It is more, it has been more left to those of us that are programmers and those of us that are just like minimalist. Um, and I mean, I have a little collection of 40%. I'm quite fond of them. Um, and, but all of them I paid 50 60 maybe $70 um, and even sometimes bare bone so the fact that this one is available for $34.99 and it's QMK and VIA an actual true VIA because it's built off QMK and you can modify the source to your heart's desire is honestly just speaking to the current state of the market and what we have available um, I would almost you know argue that six months ago $50 would have still been a good deal for this, but at $34.99, if you want a 40%, this is a great keyboard to start with. I mean, it the construction of it is pretty simple, and I am going to open it up and get in there. I mean, it is a tray mount, 
So, uh, I mean, if you want gas amount, then I suggest the Akko. Akko has a very nice 40% um, in an acrylic uh, semi-translucent case. That one's really nice, but it's not a plank. So this one does offer, I mean, what a lot of the plank 40% out there do. The 47 keys, uh, 2U space, um, and four layers, which should be more than enough to program for anything that you might need. So it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to it, but muscle memory and everything, it shouldn't take that long to get used to it. I've, I'm already kind of used to it, even though the mappings are slightly different than what I do on mine, but I do, because I, I actually like the default mappings that it includes. I'm Honestly, I was not expecting to like this very much, but I, see, I saw it keep popping up, keep popping up, and then, like I said, I went to Micro Center and they they gave it to me for what was twenty dollars off um, because of the, of the the torn shrink wrap. But obviously, there's no issue with this keyboard. I also want to get into the QMK source and go ahead and build my own and see if I can um, see if there's any issues. But so far, the code seems fine to me. I mean, I just went and did a quick overview of it. If you're looking for a 40%, this just might be it, especially it being QMK Avaya. I mean, I love the fact that I can just plug it into my Linux machine and I don't have to worry about loading up a virtual machine or moving over to my Windows laptop. It just works. So I like it. I really like it. I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of the MK47 from Inland and Micro Center. Um, if you have any comments, any questions, any suggestions for what I should do to it when I come back to it, because I will be coming back to it to mod it, um, and probably going to mess around with the QMK as well. Um, I'd be glad to answer your questions. Please place them down below in the comments. I do my best to answer every comment in a timely manner. Um, and if you did like this video, a thumbs up, a subscribe really goes a long way to help. I'm almost to 5,000 users. And honestly, I don't think when I started, I was under the belief that I wouldn't even reach 100 people. So the fact that so many people have watched my videos and continue to watch them, and I get a lot of positive feedback, I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you that watches my videos. I know I don't make slick, overly highly produced videos because I'm not make commercials. I'm just presenting the keyboard and giving you my opinion as well as giving you the hard facts about it. So I really appreciate each and every single one of you guys' support. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the MK47 with the Huana Reds and the OEM, what I believe are ABS keycaps. And until the next transmission, as always, keep calm and keyboard on.